Here in eastern Pennsylvania is a fire that has been burning for 53 years to the day. It's going to be burning for another 250 more. It started simply in 1962 with a dump fire on Memorial Day. They happened all the time. They usually just burn themselves out. And this particular dump fire spread, and it spread to an open coal vein. This fire would start a slow motion disaster that would consume and destroy the town of Centralia over the next 50 years. So Centralia sits on a huge vein of anthracite coal and was founded in the mid-1800s with a specific purpose of coal mining. Uh, today, for the first 20 years, the fire went largely unaddressed. People didn't necessarily consider it an emergency. In 1981, everything changed. Valentine's Day, 1981, 12-year-old Todd Dombowski was playing in his grandmother's backyard when the earth opened up below his feet. I seen smoke and I thought I didn't want her, my grandmother, to go over near because she's elderly and I was worried about her, so I went over to see if it was the mine fire. And when I did, I just fell right through. Luckily, his cousin was right there grabbed him and pulled him out before he fell, what turned out to be into the 150-foot hole that had been created. Centralia went from being an anonymous town with a little coal fire problem to being a huge national concern. The question was, what were they gonna do about this town that was on fire? It divided the town in half. Half the people wanted to stay, they wanted to make it a better place to live, they said it was safe. The other half were basically looking for federal funds to leave. They said, we don't wanna be here. It got really ugly and finally it ended in a vote. More than half the town voted to leave. And that was the moment that Centralia truly began unraveling. So in 1984, most of the residents were bought out and given funds to leave Centralia. In 1992, the town was officially claimed using eminent domain. In 2002, the Postal Service officially revoked the zip code for Centralia. And finally, in 2009, the governor of Pennsylvania began enforcing the eminent domain, trying to make the last few residents, which at this point was down to 11, leave the town. But the residents that were still here didn't want to go. And their argument was that the coal fire had actually moved. It was headed towards other towns now, and that Centralia's air quality was back to as good as or better than it was before the coal fire started. They were allowed to stay. As of 2013, they were given permission to live out their lives here. But when the last 10 residents of Centralia die, the town officially will cease to exist. Centralia is certainly the most famous example of a coal mine fire, but it's, it's actually one of 38 active coal mine fires in the state of Pennsylvania, one of hundreds in the US. And if you get into India or China, we're talking about thousands and thousands of active coal mine fires. And in fact, the collective output uh, of carbon monoxide of coal mine fires may account for as much as 1% of global warming. Much like Chernobyl, uh, Centralia has enough kind of ruined capital. It's a go-to, I think, as a kind of pop cultural reference for abandoned disaster. You know, this is sort of a town gone wrong. The thing that looks the most like a ruin is this abandoned turnpike. Uh, there's not much left. I mean, the buildings are basically gone. It looks like a bunch of overgrown lots. Uh, slowly turning back into forest. Uh, and one day, you know, that's what it'll be. It'll be some streets through a forest and no one will think twice about what was here once before.